I first want to ask you both what a typical hair and makeup session looked like with each of these actors. About how long did it take to get them ready to go do that first take of a scene? I think for each character, it really depended. And it also kind of changed day to day, depending on what the needs were. Um, Natalie and I, once we would get the call sheet every morning, would come in and and kind of map out. We would make basically like little what we call flow charts. And it would be like, OK, who makes sense to go to hair first? Who can go to makeup? And that it'll be it'll time out where this person's in there for 45 minutes and this person's in hair for 45 and then swap them. Um, it doesn't always work out that way where it's, you know, an even even number on both sides. There were days where if I needed to cover tattoos on Harris and Jeremy, me, which takes a little bit longer um, that, you know, Natalie and her team might have, you know, finished two or three people. And so you're, you're kind of just rotating through your teams with the actors. So if there was no tattoo cover for me, it could be as simple as a 10, 15 minute men's grooming. But if there was blood or injuries or tattoo cover, it could be anywhere between 30 to an hour for, for makeup. It's very different for every character. For Zach, for instance, we had two different wigs for him, but then those wigs had to be fit and we kind of worked, we did a couple fittings with them to kind of get it to hone in on exactly what we all kind of collectively wanted. We had a couple different wig fittings for each of those because he had two custom wigs and then Harris had a custom wig as well. Jeremy had Capelli K-tip extensions in. So that way, that kind of saved us from having to spend like 30 45 minutes, 30, 45 minutes on another wig every single day. And it also looked better because his hair was almost long enough and it was so close to Carrie's te natural texture. I was like, it's going to look so much better if we have, we just needed like three more inches. <laughs> so, um, and, but then we also had to think about what's going to stay in, what's going to work out while they're wrestling. Because all those wrestling scenes, like we didn't get like a cut and be like, okay, now you can go in and do looks. Like we set them and then they went and wrestled for like 10 to 12 minutes. That made it kind of wild for us. <laughs> yeah, there was no coming in and out of makeup or wigs. Once the day started, it was like, unless there was a look change, it was like out the gate, we were running all day long. There's a lot of friction, a lot of movement in this movie. How do you work around that as hair and makeup artists to make sure that things continue to look the way they need to look for like scene continuity? I mean, it's definitely a feat. I mean, we had to go in every single every single time they cut. For instance, all the wigs, like every single wig, I'm like, they, they were actually sweating. So I'm like, that lace, we gotta go touch them up every time. <laughs> we had them, you know, maintaining the sweat continuity. We had to like pretty well drench them down because the wig, will, like you don't have natural sweat coming. We were shooting in Louisiana, so it's very humid there. And the steam from the, their own body heat kind of will dry out the wig. So you have to like, almost like, oil it up and wet it up double the amount because their natural body heat starts to steam dry the wig up. So you start catching that and you're like, oh my gosh, I have to like double down. Yeah, for, for makeup, it was, it was kind of like a learning curve. Every day was a new experience and a new challenge. And it was like, okay, well, what can we do better tomorrow? What can we do different tomorrow um, to really just help us along throughout the day? Because like Natalie said, we were going in, you know, they would wrestle for an entire match. It was like 10 to 12 minutes at a time. And so we would go in, check the tattoo cover, check everything, be like, okay, they're good this time. We just need to sweat them up. And then we'd, you know, step away. But if there was a tattoo cover that needed to be um, adjusted, we would do that as quickly as possible and then try to problem solve. Like, okay, tomorrow, what can we do better uh, or, or change to really help us along with this process? So it really was a fun kind of exciting challenge every single day for us. And not to mention that these guys are playing real people. I mean, Natalie, when you were doing research for how these wigs have to look, how much did you pay attention to reference photos of the actual Von Erich brothers? And how did that influence your process of kind of designing these hair pieces? Oh, I, I absolutely dove into the Von Erich brothers. Like, um, because yeah, whenever I, I've done a few other biopics before, um, and yeah, it's just so important because you're portraying somebody and like, and they're still alive. They're gonna go see it. I don't want them to be like, that is not at all what, <laughs> that's not at all what I look like. <laughs> the hair wasn't necessarily good because if it looked like good, that's not what the 80s hair, that's not what true 80s hair looked like. Like it's fun that we're recreating it and going through like a new modern era of like the 80s and 90s. That's been fun, but I'm like, they weren't custom cuts back then. It was blunt, it was not cute, it was full. Like if you didn't know how to style it, you just had that cut, you know? <laughs> 
there's some great wigs made from some very bad hairstyles in this movie. And then same question for Elle, when it comes to makeup and recreating these real people, are there any things that you can remember that you had to do that like a birthmark or a mole or whatever it was that really you had to pay attention to the small details to create it on screen? Yeah, I think for makeup, it's a little different because uh, unless you're doing what's called like a likeness makeup, uh, where you're gonna do prosthetics to give somebody a specific forehead or a specific chin or jawline, um, we're really trying to create the essence of the character. So for us, it was like, okay, you know, do we body shave them? Do we tan them? Um, let's definitely cover tattoos because not only did none of the actual guys have tattoos, but of the time period, it really wasn't, tattoos were not as prevalent as they are now. Um, so it was kind of like picking and choosing the moments that you want to focus on and you want to shine. But somebody like Holt who played Fritz, he, we really decided to, to go for it with him. He didn't take care of himself. He, you know, put wrestling first. He worked outside all day. So he was red and splotchy and broken capillaries and, you know, sunspots. And, you know, we did a little bit of aging on him. And in terms of someone like the mom or, or Pam, there were very limited photos for us. So that was when we kind of got to have uh, a little bit of flexibility in choosing what to make, you know, what looks to go for, you know, in terms of like the wedding or a funeral, these women are not in Los Angeles and, or New York. They're in a, a suburb of Dallas and they're not going to be putting in the same amount of effort necessarily that a woman somewhere else would be in the eighties. And so it was really trying to find like fine tune that look very specific location and a very specific time frame with no real frame of reference knowing that she's a mom and a vet okay you're not gonna cake makeup on her and make her look like you know super super glamorous so it was actually really fun to like find these like subtle moments to follow the time period but also create a character that we didn't really have a ton of evidence on what are some of the techniques that you use for things like the blood, like the sweat. Is there anything that kind of is, maybe it's a simple DIY kind of thing. Anyone could put it together and then it's, oh, it's also used in these major motion pictures. So unfortunately for something like this, it's it's not as DIY. There are definitely shows and uh, projects that I've worked on where it's like, oh, uh, they threw this thing in today. We've got to, you know, kind of pull it out of thin air and you kind of make something out of nothing. But because of the nature of this script and the amount of action that they were um, up against, something like blood, for example, uh, we were using multiple layers to really get that blood. We were using like an alcohol-based makeup uh, as the blood first. Then we were layering a blood that's called like a flow blood, but that dries down, but looks wet on top of that. And then another blood on top of that. So there was actual movement. And so for that, it was more of like a process of like, how can we get this to stay, but also let it move. Um, so there wasn't really like at home things that, you know, people could, you know, share in, in this, but, uh, it was really kind of fine tuning like the little secret tips and tricks of like a Hollywood makeup artist essentially and being like, what can we use to to longevity of this? The one thing that I will say that's definitely like an at home thing, instead of using the thing that everybody knows for sweat is glycerin. Glycerin is sticky and it's if it gets in their eyes, it'll burn. And it's not super safe if they're gonna be flipping each other upside down. So we kind of found this beautiful recipe of like lotions and moisturizers that we would layer first on top of their skin on the tattoo cover, and then use what's called a continuous mister to just wet them down with water when we had to do sweat because it was the safest option for them. It's really a testament to how much of a, a science this is really. I mean, when you think of Makeup artists, I think a lot of people think literal like eyeliner, eyeshadow, makeup, but there's so much more to it when it comes to body makeup. When their wrestling outfits leave so much skin exposed and then that skin is rubbing up against the ropes of the ring and other wrestlers. It's definitely like a, 
a team effort. You know, every day it was a conversation with the costume designer and with Natalie, you know, who's in wigs, what sort of skin is exposed, what costumes are they wearing? You know, our costume designer uh, made over like a hundred custom trunks for all of the wrestlers. So it was like, okay, who's got tattoo cover today that we have to make sure we seal, you know, as strong as possible that it's not transferring onto these one of a kind pieces. And, you know, who's got blood today? We have to make sure we're coordinating with Natalie so that she she puts the blood wing on and not the real wing because you have to make sure that you're using the stunt one so that once it gets bloody, you don't have to worry about resetting it. So it was just a lot of coordination and, and quite a team effort. Natalie, can I ask you, did you have a favorite wig out of all of the ones that were used on this movie? Oh my gosh. Um, I think I think Zach's second wig was probably my favorite wig. Yeah, <laughs> that was just like, we. that's when we finally had everything down. We knew where we were going with it because we kind of figured everything out with the first wig. And then the second wig we uh, was just like a little bit longer and I added more highlights just to show like a little bit progression of time and give him like a kind of blend in between two different looks. Cause he didn't, he had two different hair colors. Like he had like kind of like a level six for most of his life, the real Kevin. But then he, there was like several like iconic photos of him where his hair is almost completely blonde. So we were like, okay, which look do we go for? So we kind of like found something in between because you could tell it was like a natural sun bleached blonde, but with Zach's skin tone, cause he's a lot darker than Kevin was like naturally, like he's got different undertones. So I was like, that blonde will not work well on your skin. <laughs> That natural like yellowy blonde is gonna wash you out in a weird way. So we're gonna have to like, we can get a little bit, we can like highlight it up. And so we can give a little bit of a nod to it, but I don't think we can ever go full blonde. And so, or else it's gonna look, well, it won't look right. It'll just look weird. <laughs> you know? I wanna ask each of you, what do you want people to know the most about what you do? Or is there a misconception about hairstyling for movies or makeup artistry for movies that you find people have that you want to dispel a little bit? Anything? I definitely think people assume that, you know, makeup is definitely just a beauty world and that that's really all that it is. But at the end of the day, we're creating characters. We're attached to these projects weeks and weeks, sometimes months in advance, reading scripts, doing research, you know, create really creating the look for each of these characters. And I think that that's a huge misconception is that we kind of just walk onto set on day one and we're just popping makeup on everybody. But it really is much deeper than that. And it's it, it's a lot more prep and there's a lot more involved behind the scenes before we even start shooting that really kind of starts to build the characters before we even pick up brushes. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then wig working, everybody thinks, oh, just pop a wig on. And it's like, there's a whole wrap process that's very intricate to like get the hair because you have to wrap their natural hair as flat as possible to the head and make sure no hairs or anything. You can't have any kind of little bubbles. It has to be gelled and sprayed down so tight and like almost like a rock. Otherwise that little, that little bit of like baby fringe or whatever right here will sit and pop your lace up. So half the time, whenever we have wigs, they'll be like, how long? I'm like, well, for the first time, at least 45 minutes, they're like, what? <laughs> All you gotta do is throw a wig on them, right? And I'm like, no, it's not that <laughs> easy. I mean, I will say that although we did have a lot of fun, like behind the scenes, it was so just, amazing to watch these boys work and how seriously they took it and how much they poured their heart into not just the wrestling but the characters across the board and when you have actors that are so dedicated to telling a story as well as your director your dp it it makes you want to do the story justice so i i think just being a part of a project that you can feel really just resonated with everybody and really just wanting to tell this story and do it right. Uh, it, it's infectious. You just want to do the best you absolutely can. I mean, Zach, Jeremy and Harris brought it every single day. Holt brought it every single day. Like you had no choice but to show up every day with 110%. And it's not always that same atmosphere on a set, but this film in particular was really really special and it makes you want to do your best and no matter how challenging like a makeup can be it makes you want to do 
everything you can to get it right. Yeah, I mean, when I was watching it, I think one of the things that really stood out to me was just the family chemistry that came across from it. it you really felt like you were watching brothers and watching a father and his sons and a mother and her sons. and there's just so much that goes into that, whether it's acting or whether it's the way that they look, they looked related as well. So it's, it really did stick out to me. Thank Thanks so, so much, much for having us. I would say one of my favorite movies of the year, so, of 2023. Oh, oh thank you so much. That's great. <laughs>